Arachnid or a creature surfacing in Lake Mead. So far, photos of the so-called Lake Mead monster are grainy and underexposed. The news has been brought to you by the Vicky and Vance Casino. Vicky and Vance, be our partners in crime. Got a song for you now. It's about a guy who's cold on the exterior, but deep down, you know, he's a good man. And his name is Johnny Guitar. No, 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 no. Johnny can take his guitar and shove it. I swear to God, that dude plays this song every other hour. And that would be Thirst. All right, let's see. Yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna die. I know I should have stayed in Boston. Oh, good. I get to not die of thirst, and I get to loot the place for cash. Sweet. Huh. This place actually doesn't look too bad. Better condition than the other holes in the floor I've been to. Howdy, partner! <laughs> My parameters here are pretty straightforward. If I kill something, it's gotta be with the Pew Pew laser pistol. The Pew Pew is a pistol, but not every laser pistol is the Pew Pew, simple as that. I've gotta follow the story as closely as possible. I am well aware nothing is stopping me from throwing myself into Vegas immediately, I've done it enough times, but that's no fun. Game is on very hard because pain, and I'm not allowed to use companions. There was additionally another parameter of only healing using Sunset Sarsaparilla, but that got ruined pretty quickly. I'll explain later as to why, but overall, no food, no other drinks, and no stim packs, and technically speaking, no buff out. I am allowed to use a doctor's bag to heal crippled limbs as the only exception, and I will note that I did adhere to the Sunset Sarsaparilla healing for the majority of this run. I woke up in the loving arms of Doc Mitchell after being shot in the face. I was instructed to build who I would be and decided my character would be as close to a human Festus as possible, though in my opinion it ended up looking like I ordered Nigel Thornberry from Wish. My special points were allocated into Perception, Agility, and Charisma. Unlike Fallout 4, I actually decided to try and read what I would be affecting this time. Since Perception affects energy weapons, I figured I would benefit from it being maxed out early on. Agility for movement and reload speed, and Charisma was more for perk reasons than anything given how the playthrough went. I didn't really think of anything specific when making this up. My tag skills were Barter, Energy Weapons, and Survival. I picked Survival specifically under the assumption that I would get more health from drinking sarsaparilla, but I did some googling and, uh... Take a wild guess as to which specific food item is not affected by the survival skill in any capacity. Once I was finished, I robbed Doc Mitchell blind after dropping all the stuff from the DLC packs. I decided to beeline for the factory after getting what soda I could from town. Doing so made me understand why the game throws you towards Nipton first, because I quickly became acquainted with the local Cazadors and other assorted wildlife. I did briefly manage to lure some scorpions and geckos into a fight with others to get a chance to breathe, but I kept dying and even got jump scared at one point. I also briefly ran into the local vipers who decided to throw bullets in my general direction, much to my dismay. Early on, I hotkeyed the sarsaparilla so I wouldn't have to constantly pause the game to heal myself. The big horners saved me at some point, but then proceeded to turn on me as well. The Cazadors continued to rip me apart, but I eventually found my way around only to find myself in Deathclaw territory. This required me to sneak as much as I can, but it became a problem since the Deathclaws immediately spot you when they so much as see a single skin flake coming off of you, which a couple of them did. One even became good friends with a wall. Trial and error soon got me closer to my goal. I could see the factory in the distance, but now I had to deal with the fiends in the area. A group with both conventional and energy weapons doesn't spell anything good for a low level who is literally defenseless right now. I tried the same tactic I did with the geckos by luring them to an NCR soldier that was nearby, but the guy ran away! Don't you have a gun? Get back here! It took a few tries between being killed by friends and making friends with the local minefield, but I eventually found myself where I needed to be, right at the factory door. My original plan was to try to do this for real, but I couldn't feasibly see myself running around Vegas looking for all 50 caps needed to finish the quest. By the time I have all the caps I need, I could just fast travel around and finish the game. There would be no point. Plan B was to play Lucky Horseshoes until I got all the needed caps, but that plan got grenaded pretty much instantly. Per the Fallout wiki, of the times you get rewards from winning a game, 24% of the time you'll get a card for your caravan deck, 6% of the time you'll get a blue star cap, and the rest of the time you get up to 9 standard caps. 
So assuming you were to consistently get six star caps every 100 games, you would have to play Lucky Horseshoes over 800 times, and that's being generous with the odds. You can see why I gave this up quickly, because I'm pretty sure I'd die of thirst by the time I got everything I needed. My next plan was to push through the factory and get my prize by force, assuming the Protectrons didn't slap that dream down. Against all odds, I made my way to the prize room, but now I had another problem. These doors will not open unless you complete Legend of the Star. So how do we get in? Those familiar with Fallout 3 and New Vegas speedruns know of the quick save quick load wall clip, which is what I used here. With great difficulty. It was one thing to get into the area for the prize room, but actually getting into the damn prize room was a problem within itself. I spent half an hour trying to figure out how the hell I was supposed to clip through the walls because no matter where I tried, I couldn't quite get through. Of course, I wasn't in the right area. Enough of you would see me fumble around Boston with a flamethrower to know I'm physically incapable of doing things correctly. This glitch works better with a more complex wall, so instead of using the flat intact walls like I was, I should have been using the more conveniently placed garbage and rubble nearby. That thankfully ended up working, but now I had another problem. Getting into the room itself. It's not attached to anything other than the hallway. What ended up working was going upstairs, clipping into the adjacent wall above, walking through the ceiling, landing on the rubble going into the bathroom, landing on the minuscule sliver of floor that was sticking out of the prize room, and then clipping inside. This took a few tries since I kept falling, and whatever genius designed this interior set the entrance to the factory as the center of the cell. Once inside, I got my gun, looted the free shit, and had to get out. Not a total issue since there's a lot of objects that allow me to clip through, and all I needed to do was fall down and leave the factory. Now I had the pew pew and was only slightly more armed and dangerous. I tested my new toy and the local fiends to see if it would go well. Yeah, it didn't. I returned to the factory and snagged every single full bottle of soda that I was able to get my hands on, and continued to forget that most of the boxes in the factory only have empty bottles as much as it annoyed me. I enjoyed target practice with the Protectrons when they weren't killing me, and at a certain point I had to find a balance between barter material and soda bottles to maintain my storage space. I leveled up for the first time and chose to dump my skill points into energy weapons and barter, and snagged Confirmed Bachelor as my first perk. Ten more damage against the same gender is a no-brainer as a male character. As mentioned earlier, I wanted to follow the story as closely as possible. I'm not going into the strip if I do not know where Benny is. I went back to Good Springs and recycled ammo for the first time. This is going to be very crucial later, as I can only buy ammo in so many places. I should note that this is going to be a very kill-heavy playthrough. Leveling up quickly is important, as I need to get myself as protected as possible due to how limited I am in terms of equipment and healing items. Speaking of protection, a lack of ammo was becoming very apparent very quickly once I got to Prim. I teleported back to the Church of Festus before seeking out a store to buy ammo from. The Pew Pew, to my understanding, is the strongest laser pistol available in the base game by normal means. By comparison, a normal unmodified laser pistol in perfect condition does 12 damage per shot with standard ammunition, has a 30 round magazine, using only one energy cell per shot. The Pew Pew has a ridiculous 75 damage per shot in perfect condition with standard ammo and has a 10 round magazine. Unlike the normal pistol, the Pew Pew uses 5 energy cells per shot, allowing it to only fire twice before needing to reload, hence the name. The Pew Pew itself is still somewhat expensive to use, but is pretty powerful apart from a few things. You have the occasional goof where the laser can miss entirely despite being aimed right at someone, which can also make it somewhat dangerous to use, as you have some more time spent reloading which leaves you open to attack. Durability is something to mention as well. The Pew Pew is about one third as durable as the stock laser pistol and will break after 395 shots from perfect condition. This is ultimately a non-issue as any standard laser pistol can be used to fix the weapon. Another thing important to note is the ammo requirements, or better yet, the technical lack of them. Yes, the Pew Pew uses five energy cells to fire a single laser, but five cells are not required to shoot or even reload the Pew Pew. If a player is carrying 100 energy cells in their inventory, this will translate to 20 shots with the Pew Pew. Simple enough. But as long as you have a single energy cell in your inventory above or below five rounds, you can shoot the gun. 99 energy cells is still technically 20 shots despite being one short. 101 cells becomes 21 shots, 106 becomes 22, so on so forth. Even if you have one cell loaded into the gun, you'll be able to shoot. Back in Vegas, I did some more exploring in the various portions of the Vegas ruins for soda and ammo. I also went to an apartment complex, and after watching a man drink the inferior beverage that will not be named, I quietly closed his door, looked at him carefully, and... Later on, after getting to level 3, I continued my search for ammo. First stop was the Gunrunners, with no success apart from a cash injection, then Milk and Ralphs, and then the Van Graffs. This might seem contradictory to what I said earlier about not wanting to reach Vegas before finding out where Benny is, but I said I'm not going into the Strip. I'm just wandering around Freeside and adjacent areas for ammo supply. Speaking of, I popped the Stealth Boy and swiped everything in the Van Graffs that wasn't nailed down, keeping the ammo and selling back everything else. I bought their Microfusion cells too, since ammo conversion is possible if your science skill is high enough. 
I farmed ammo briefly by standing in their store for two days straight, and then took up their offer for a job because I could honestly use the money, ammo, and armor from them. I was then tasked with screening people for entry into the store. I did the quest normally at first, but I thought it would be funny to mess up the last guy on purpose. Now, I figured something bad would happen since my recollection involved this dude opening fire on us. What I expected was something bad, what I wasn't expecting was to be blasted to the other side of the street. Get pranked, nerds. I shouldn't have to tell you why they didn't like this at all. I made my way back to the Bison Steve to save Deputy Beagle and get more information on where Benny was. My next destination was Novak, but not before some powder gangers decided I was going to die. It ended poorly, but not for me. I started hunting the local centaurs, which was a waste of ammo in hindsight, but it got me to level 4 and gave myself the educated perk. Later on, I followed some train tracks and entered Nipton through the back. Oliver Swanick was killed anyway because I had no interest in finding out who won the lottery today. My first attempt was met with failure, so I went into Nipton the proper way after hunting Big Horner, killing the people fighting over Star Caps, and killing Oliver Swanick again. I had to do a game of Ring Around the Rosie with Volpes and his crew, but multiple deaths, VAT usage, and an excessive amount of chems later, I finally got rid of Volpes because I'm the only dog-headed idiot allowed to be in this town. This brought me to level 5 and my first problem with the game. On my second day of recording, I ran into an issue. I started up my game and was loading the game for 10 minutes straight with no progress. I was briefly afraid I might have to start the game over, but I loaded an autosave which thankfully loaded normally and got myself to Novak. Of course, not before getting my ass spread like peanut butter on the pavement thanks to vipers and landmines. I ran into some traveling traders who sold me some more ammo and allowed me to unload my junk. Some fighting broke out between NCR and Legion, and I tried to land killing blows for XP on everyone involved. The Vipers showed up again, apparently having learned nothing from my last encounter. I passed by Ranger Station Charlie and gave myself the bloody mess perk, slipped into Novak, did some more trading. I made a small note that Novak could be a good spot to buy ammo in the future so exploding the Van Graffs wasn't a total waste. I talked to Manny and got Benny's location through the confirmed bachelor skill check, but decided to do the come fly with me quest for the experience involved. The Bright Brotherhood tended to use energy weapons too, so I had a chance to resupply myself with ammo as I go. A few words with the guy who was totally a ghoul, I swear, led me to Jason Bright who wanted me to deal with the Nightkin in the basement. Attempts here had limited success since the Nightkin had a habit of not only acquainting crap with pants, but were also able to bonk me into the next life fairly easily, an unfortunate side effect of being level 6. Way too much time was spent in the basement both due to the Nightkin and due to my compulsive need to loot absolutely everything in sight. I had to switch to bolt grounds because of the time down here gross. I ran into Davison and his imaginary friend who were looking for a stealth boy invoice. I ran all over the place looking for it, eventually told Harland his friend was dead, and told Davison to get lost. Once the ghouls were downstairs, I had to find parts for the rocket. I stole the igniting agent from the dino store and then did the speech check so I can take the rest of it guilt-free. I bought the thrust modules and it was at this moment I realized something very unfortunate. The Vault 13 Canteen. I've been playing this game for years and never bothered to check to see if it does anything outside of hardcore mode. And much to my shock, it does. Not only does it hold back your thirst in hardcore mode, but every time it gets drunk every 5 real world minutes, it restores 15 HP. That threw a wrench into the idea of the run since I was technically healing by meaning other than Sarsaparilla the entire time. I briefly debated scrapping the run and starting over, but ultimately decided to keep the playthrough since the amount being healed was so minimal and infrequent it didn't matter in the grand scheme of things. This run is as chaotic as it is. I blew up a guaranteed energy cells vendor because I thought it would be funny. I got rid of the canteen as soon as I could and shot Haversim in the back of the head while he was excited. A great journey can begin. I then chose to have a little fun by clipping into the launch pad to see what would happen. Not only is the area not psychotically irradiated like they said it was, the rocket itself is completely static, so you can walk right through it. There's also a long hallway to nowhere in there too, which is honestly kinda neat. Once that was done, I convinced Chris to chill in Novak and sent the ghouls into space. That leveled me up and I got my energy weapons to 90. Next stop was Boulder City. Along the way I met Ranger Milo, who wanted me to kill the NCR POWs in the nearby town. I told him f*** that and got busy killing everyone in the area like it was nobody's business. Even turned one poor bastard into Lego and helped Dead Sea live up to his name. I had to check my difficulty multiple times throughout the entire game because people were dropping like flies and I haven't even hit the strip yet. There was a brief boink back to Good Springs for recycling which left me with 1200 rounds. Traveling back, I found a grate in the middle of the desert and nearly started dead money by accident. Someday, not today. Once in Boulder City, I robbed the bar, picked off Kowalski, and got info from Monroe before picking him off too. Sadly, the NCR troops weren't too happy about that, so they had to go too. I spoke to Jessup about Benny's whereabouts and took the lone sarsaparilla on the counter as payment for getting rid of the troops outside. Next stop was Vegas.
Okay, it was the gun runners to unload garbage. Then it was Vegas. I originally wanted to go to the traveling merchants as well, but the game crashed for the first time after talking with them. I blamed the crash on them and just went straight into Freeside. I spent a little time in Mick and Ralph's looking for a means of getting into Vegas. Some idiot tried to rob the store, which ended about as well as you would expect. My next stop was the Kings. If I wanted to get into Vegas, I needed to get on the Kings good side. I spent a week's pay to see him, which surprised him so much he paid me back right then and there. My time was then spent doing work for the King, I put on some fresh combat armor, and blasted the Atomic Wrangler Crier into oblivion. After subsequently angering everybody in the immediate area, I sheltered with the followers of the Apocalypse and gave up my drugs for clout. I hired Oris, who proceeded to ignore a thug running straight at him. I tried to call Oris out in his nonsense and resorted to getting medical proof by means of skimming through a magazine and taking pills. I eventually shot the guy on the floor and all of them sprang up to try and kill me. In the battle of Soda Laser and Pool Q, Soda Laser wins. There was some walking, Victor briefly said hello and then vanished from reality. I told the king what was done was done, and Rex was thrilled over it. It got me to level 10, which subsequently led me to dumping more points into barter and science and giving myself the fight the power perk for better damage. I got my fake passport from Mick and Ralph's and made my way into the strip. The tops was my first stop, but they took my gun from me, so unfortunately that meant I couldn't do anything at all. Instead, I wandered around the strip for a bit, acquainted myself with the Phoebus family who vented about Heck Gunderson. He'll be relevant later. I walked past a promoter for the tops who had the audacity to say this to me. I'm too civilized, otherwise I'd stone you to death. I killed him for that, and the Securitrons returned the favor almost immediately. I needed an excuse to bring weapons into the tops, so I had to get cozy with Mr. House for a bit, but not before scrambling around the Lucky 38 Casino for anything and everything. I realized while reviewing my footage that it's kind of surprising that the Securitrons don't try to obliterate you for taking anything from the Lucky 38. You'd think someone like House, who has somehow managed to keep his casino virtually mint since the literal nuclear war, would be a little more cautious about his mailman with a severe soda addiction stumbling around his casino taking everything that isn't bolted to the floor. Anyway, after playing steel till you keel on the ground floor and wasting your trip to the cocktail lounge, seriously, there's no sarsaparilla here, why even have this floor? I got and filled in on the platinum chip and was told to speak to Swank. I convinced him to give him my crap back after telling him Benny is bad news. Before taking the fight to the guy, I slipped into Benny's suite and introduced myself to Yes Man. Spoiler alert, he's relevant to this video. Back on the main floor, Benny didn't seem to acknowledge my existence until I got literally up in his face. I opened fire on Benny right there and used vats to blast my way into an early grave. This the second time around, Benny still didn't speak to me until I spoke to him. Benny showed me what she sees and then killed me again. Getting rid of him was proven to be more work than I expected. Luckily, I knew what to turn to in this situation like any hardworking American. Drugs! I blasted Benny and the boys into oblivion, got the chip, and the chairman opened fire on me. I slipped into a suite to escape, I picked off any chairman that followed me up there, and when the dust settled, I leveled up. Some legion idiot had the nerve to be in my immediate area, so he got what he deserved. And I decided that house was next on my shit list. I opened fire, he did too. I got a refresher on the platinum chip lore, and tried again. This time more successful. With house now dead, I checked his fancy apartment in the area for anything good. There wasn't. I talked to Yes Man, and decided that my next stop would be the Ultra Lux. This spot right here is where the entire run just went downhill. I spoke to Heck Gunderson and made tasteless jokes about his missing son. Back with Phoebus, he told me to kill the kid ASAP. Back in the Ultralux, there was this clanging noise like something was stuck in the floor and kept colliding with something. I hear a troublesome Legion camp got raised to the ground. Mortimer was unpleasant and told me that I needed to be known on the strip a little more to do anything with him. By the end of what I'm about to do, I'll be known for sure. Further exploring led me to a guest hotel room and after spotting several cola bottles atop a fridge, I decided that nobody would be spared later. I left the casino and then returned for the mess. Unfortunately, the first issues with this became apparent when the music and sound effects weren't loading properly. Then the game crashed. I reloaded the game and got stuck in loading screen hell again. Loading an earlier save let me put a laser into Hex's head, and one of the white glove greeters had the balls to ask me to give up the gun right then and there. I waited two days, bought some soda, and achieved my semi-final form by taking Hex's outfit. I blasted the greeter and began removing the rest of the white gloves. I ran around in circles holding back the others while they chased me with dressed canes and other trash. The bartender packed heat, but I was the better shot. Sadly, one greeter bonked me noggin and ended um. round one. Round two ended much more quickly, and round three was better with the help of I made this joke already. Mortimer died peacefully with his leg flying off. I got the finesse perk, reacquainted myself with the hotel guests, and started collecting EXP. My rampage soon led me to Marjorie, who only seemed mildly upset by the trail of bodies behind me. Uh. I knocked her out in the heads of the diners as well. I looked around the kitchen for Ted, but... 
I, I couldn't find him. He didn't spawn at all. Granted, I killed his father, but I started the quest. He should have been here. Later down the line, I found myself doing some side questing to bump on my levels a bit and find more energy cell sources. Soon enough, I found myself in Hidden Valley when something hit me. You know who has a lot of energy cells? The Brotherhood of Steel. I let them take me into custody and dealt with the ranger holed up nearby. Once I was free from the bomb collar, I got to sneaking and stealing. Bunches of energy cells from various types all over the place. It was mostly microfusions, but those can be converted. I later helped Harden become head of the Brotherhood by getting holotapes. The Legion Assassins made their first appearance after I left a Repcon office building. Chems helped me out here, and I realized that the Pew Pew is really good at exploding cars. A few rounds later, I won and gave myself the pack wrap perk. When I did some recycling at Crimson Caravan, I had 1600 energy cells by this point, along with well over 20,000 caps burning a hole in my pocket. I decided now was a good time to become closer to my namesake by getting some cybernetic enhancements. The boomers were next on the list. Hug the sidewall, and you can bypass most of the bombardment apart from some explosions trailing behind you. After speaking to Pearl, I chose to leave him alone. Back in the Brotherhood, I gave my stuff to Harden, who told me that the Van Graffs needed to go due to their technology nonsense. Embarrassingly, I briefly forgot I killed them already. After telling him of this fact, I learned how to use power armor, which was useless knowledge to me in the end. The Legion decided to mess with me again. This one was harder due to being in open air instead of a parking lot. They probably got me 10 reloads not counting the moment I ate a squirrel and had to reverse time. I did some hunting on my way to Red Rock Canyon and decided to leave the cons alone as I didn't feel they were worth my time right now. Although I was far into the game, I had some unfinished business. Not only were the Securitrons not upgraded, Caesar was still alive. Back in Novak, I started heading south to Cottonwood Cove and began a stealth mission to remove Legion from the area. Maxed out energy weapons, sneak attack crits, and all the damage boosts I had made this a piece of cake apart from the few times they spotted me. I knocked out everyone outside, slowly taking what wasn't rightfully mine, and then ran into Severus. He was only slightly more annoying, same for Canyon Runner, but Aurelius of Phoenix was a complete joke. I blinked away temporarily to do some shopping, inventory management, and exploring. I borrowed Raul's shack for recycling purposes, and then got torn in an actual half. Next up was the fort. I fired indiscriminately, stopping for nobody and nothing while I removed everyone from this plane of existence. I only paused briefly to look at Dale Barton. He had a nice outfit, and a hat. It was good. Perfect cowboy attire. I decided it was mine. I waited for daybreak and went deeper inside. I slapped the guy with vats and then died immediately. I was taking chems faster than my body could process them, but that only did so much. I eventually found my way through the tents and lured every legion more onto a pile of dead meat. After tracking down those that remained outside, I pushed into the bunker, cleared the robots, and upgraded the Securitrons. With that done, only the big man himself was left. I entered his tent, ready to end him, and he punched my head clean off my body. In round two, I poked his dog and ran away. I lured them outside, and the world's greatest game of follow the leader began. I sadly died in the kill cam follow the guy who shot me. Next time, the picking was slow. I was trying to be careful with my aim due to dwindling ammo, but the fight ended in success with the last shot landing on Caesar himself, his head flying right off his shoulders. I carefully placed his head into a nearby fire as one final middle finger and snagged his clothes to rub salt in the wound. I had a short photo op and blinked back to Good Springs for the last time. Some shopping later, Vegas crashed and infinitely loaded again. I shoved Yes Man into the Lucky 38, told him my thoughts on the locals, went to the substation only for the Legion to end my shit. I wasted no time in El Dorado by shredding every NCR in the area, and blipped back to Vegas. I had my gun, ammo for days, and enough soda to send my kidneys straight into the Shadow Realm. The fight started immediately, and I got my ass kicked before I even set foot on the damn proper. Here I began forming my strategy by means of trial and error. The cons weren't on my side, so they had to go first. The problem was that NCR and Legion troops kept pushing through, on top of the fact that I was wearing plain clothes. I had a feeling starting this fight dressed as Easy Pete wasn't a good idea. I eventually managed to push my way deeper into the dam. I had to use cover as effectively as possible since my sarsaparilla only healed so quickly, on top of a few occasions where I dropped dead as soon as I stepped around a corner. My Securitron handled some of the heavy lifting, but he can only do so much. Once inside, I removed the heavy troops and rerouted power to the strip, then died. With the power rerouted, I got to the surface, and then got shot. Legion were coming across the dam and were dealt with once I was ready. Once I got to the Legate's camp, I picked off the Legion that dared to shoot at me and got busy with the big masked idiot. The fight is annoying due to him being a bullet sponge, but is otherwise doable. I tried to convince him to 1v1 me, but I couldn't use speech as a crutch and decided it wasn't worth it in the end. In my first attempts, I went for the legs. No dice. Take a wild guess what I did next.
Yeah, all the chems in Nevada wouldn't help here. My problem was that the legate is as fast as I am stupid. I could safely count the amount of times I died on several hands. Linnaeus is quick, and not only because he can basically erase you by looking at you, he has this knockdown effect that ragdolls you sometimes. When that happens, you're already dead. Not only does the ragdoll get annoying, his freaking backup dancers kept coming in to kill me too. As my deaths creeped into double-digit territory, I realized I was not going to be able to beat him in the state I was in. I reloaded an earlier save and went back to Good Springs. I can't boost the power of the Pew Pew, but I can change what ammo type it uses. I converted every single cell I had into overcharged rounds, reducing my ammo supply to 1100, roughly 220 shots. Overcharged rounds give me some more damage at the cost of increased weapon breakdown, but that's okay. I blinked back to Vegas, and uh, guess what I had to do all over again? Once in the tent, I tried again. I wasted no time and shot the legate in his fat head, only for him to cut me in half like cheese. I did manage to get him to retreat more often, but his soldiers kept literally punching my lights out. Repeated headshots and vats helped, but I only have so much time before he starts his grenade spam. I know I just said vats helped here, but there were a few points where it actually screwed me over as the slowdown sometimes gave him enough time to reach me and kill me. Good thing to note, if the Power Fist troops don't get you, his cliffside gunners will. At some point, I did manage to snipe out one of these gunners, but again, that only works for so long. On top of that, when you get his HP down to a certain point, he hides back in his tent to spam grenades with pinpoint accuracy like he's losing a free-for-all match in Halo. I tried shooting his sword out of his hand with no success, shooting his grenades directly didn't do much either. At this point, I was really wishing I could have wouldn't be one of the man because this would have made it infinitely less painful. Once more, follow the leader became the strategy. By this point, I was fighting Linnaeus for two hours. By now, I was dead tired and ready to call it when I noticed something. On a few occasions, the legged retreated into a corner in the main courtyard. That was when I found my window. I needed to hit him at a certain point to force him to retreat into the corner and then double down on him for the kill. This ended up being the trick I needed. After several hours and countless deaths, I turned Linnaeus to dust, began my work taking the last of the Legion out, and f up. After the reload, I quick saved as soon as the legate was dead. I used the cliffside near the tent to my advantage, luring the remains up and around and picking them off gradually. When the final soldier fell and I saw the level up screen, I was over the moon. I gave myself the meltdown perk, which would have been nice to have 20 bodies ago, and all that was left was the NCR. They blew off the gate and flashbanged me. I told Oliver about my robot collection and tried to convince him to leave only for his boys to shoot me dead right then and there. I didn't even have time to react. If Oliver could insta-kill me, the last two hours would have been for nothing. I tried vats, that didn't work. One last try. I managed to slip behind a wall while the Skiritrons did most of the work. I peeked around the corner and fired my last laser right into Oliver's ass. Yes Man gave me a debrief, the ending came and went, the credits rolled, and I beat Fallout New Vegas using only the Pew Pew Pistol. I have never hated the ending to a playthrough I enjoyed like this before. I've played Vegas time and again, I beat the game as a cowboy using only revolvers and lever actions, and even then I still had an easier time. The healing aspect might not have worked out 100%, but this was still enjoyable for the most part. Maybe Festus 2 will return. I have the DLCs, I've been thinking of the same for my flamer-only character in Fallout 4, I'll have to see how I feel. I'd be curious to see how something like Lonesome Road or Dead Money works with this character. Thank you for watching, leave your thoughts below, subscribe for more, I'll see you next time. Yo, I'm back and I hope you think of me. Get the fuck out of here.